Hey, Trek, do you know what day it is? Nope. It's Friday. <laughs> stupid top five Fridays. Stupid out of ideas. Oh, welcome to another episode of Top Five Fridays. I'm your host, Big Money Salvia, and today. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Top Five Fridays. So. We're going to be talking about barrel attachments. Barrel attachments in Nerf are a really interesting thing. Since all Nerf barrel attachments more or less use what I like to call Nerf ID, which is inner diameter, they have this uh, sort of barrel drag that affects almost all darts and almost all propulsion systems. Now, air blasters can be really, really good with the proper size barrel and additional barrel length, and springers can be as well. Air blasters want a relatively loose fit, springer blasters want a tight fit, all the way through an airtight barrel. The problem is that Hasbro literally never designs things this way. So, most barrel attachments induce drag on the darts and lower your ranges, which makes them inherently worse. This was particularly obvious back in the day when things were firing like 40, 50 FPS with the regular reverse blunder in strike line. Now, now that we have elite blasters, things tend to be much better. So there are no honorable mentions. Let's get right into it. Starting with number five, all of these are aesthetic based. Coming in at number five, we have the Nerf Modulus Barrel Attachment Adapter. Same issue with that inner diameter creating drag, but these ones are really cool because you can stack them forever, right? Forever. Uh, we're going to need the ideal Modulus Blaster, so I've chosen the best Modulus Blaster here in the Modulus Ion Fire. So let's go ahead and throw that on, and we can start stacking these attachments. So only a madman would go above any amount other than like maybe two or three of these things because then you start getting some really spooky nonsense going on. And sometimes you can get it to fall off. This is healthy foop. So let's see if we can even fire through this. Well, we can't fire at all. Here we go. And testing. Holy wow, it exited the barrel. All right, so uh, number five is this. The obvious advantage is here that you can just keep adding attachments for days. I don't particularly like these. It leads to a lot of like crazy clickbait in the hobby. And other than that, with this much foop, it's really just not that useful. But it can be funny at times, as long as you don't overplay the gag. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's our number five barrel attachment. This one's on the list just because it's been so popular in the past. It really isn't that popular now, but this is the standard modulus barrel attachment thingy. Let's move on. Coming in at number four, we have a blaster from the Pastor. That's this. This is the Nerf Long Shot Front Gun Attachment. Has a shotgun grip, has an integrated jolt type blaster. Uh, before jolts were even a thing, you had Long Shot Front Gun integrations, and they were boss. This one's been modified lightly. I think it's been brassed on the inside. It's not that bad. Of course, it attached to the long shot, which is why the lines line up here and here, and the attachment up top does as well. Also, for a very long blaster, gave you an integrated foregrip. So it really does a lot of stuff all in one go. Now, it is pretty ridiculous if you put it on blasters that are smaller than it. This is from a time when you could get a lot of Nerf blaster for a little bit of price, and so making something as humongous and awesome as the long shot something so like timelessly classic that has been rehashed and reused in prop work around the world uh, just doesn't really happen that much anymore however the long shot front gun is still a really cool attachment it's just kind of funky in a lot of different ways and while it doesn't necessarily belong on anything but the long shot it gave us just a ton of parts at a time when like this sort of integration material was very valuable you could do this number where you integrated it underneath that was very popular but more than anything you could use it to do stuff like I did with the Night Fury where you just add more stuff on top of it, cut this out, and put different things in to access this sort of like real estate on the blaster. So this is a, a pretty timeless barrel attachment. It does something relatively unique, at least for its time, and it, uh, it has a lot of potential and a lot of plastic and just a lot of spare parts. If you ever need a screw, like you could steal, I think, a dozen from the long shot front gun, and it had springs, and it had catches, and it had trigger systems, etc. So we've been using these for a really long time, in the hobby and that's why it comes in at number four plus like it's it's cool 
coming in at number three, we have the Nerf Recon attachment. So that's this piece specifically. Now this piece in my mind is hideous. I don't like it at all. I don't think that it looks that great, but it's been incredibly utilitarian. So when the Recon came out, it was cheap and it came with all these attachments on it. And oftentimes this would get overlooked, but it locks into place, it fits on every blaster, and it does something really, really important, which is it gives us plenty of rail space real estate. Now, in the beginning, that was just good for cutting up and adding rails to things that didn't have rails or cutting it up and using it to fill gaps in various like integrations or removals of things. I know that to date, this portion here is a very popular way to gap and replace the demolishers missile portion. If you cut that off, you can add this to that. So that's a pretty cool modern use, but I think that the coolest thing about the recon style or retaliator style barrel attachment is just how modular it is without being modulus. So that is to say that you can 3D print this, turn it into an AK-47 style front attachment. That's pretty cool. Uh, there are similar M16 variants and all sorts of stuff, but what's really, really neat is that the bottom rail has lots of aftermarket options like this, where you can see you could attach a grip to the Picatinny here and then use it as a shotgun prime. Uh, to put that into perspective, and I've done it with a Recon Mark II, uh, you essentially replace this slide entirely, go directly into the bolt with pieces like this, and then utilize, there's no way to showcase this easily on video without actually doing a full build. But you utilize this to pump the blaster and it gives you just a much more efficient style of priming for a blaster that's ultimately very popular because of its modularity. This chicken wing maneuver always bothered me. This is more like an alpha trooper and is much, much nicer in my opinion. So this barrel attachment is coming in at number three because it does lots of different things and is so incredibly cheap. You've probably thrifted a couple of these and don't even remember doing it. So, what could be better than something that does a lot of different things and is cheap? Well, let's move on to number two. Coming into number two, we have this guy. This is the Spectre Silencer Barrel. Now, this is not the Elite one. This is the OG, the original yellow in-strike version, and it's pretty sweet. So I always felt like James Bond when I put this on a pistol, like, Anyway, uh, it's a lot of fun. It was so short and had such a wide ID that it didn't really impact barrel drag that much, which made it a purely aesthetic attachment that you could put on pretty much anything to change kind of the feel. And like, I don't know, I've been nerfing for a long time, so I still kind of like the idea of adding a silencer or realistically a suppressor to my blaster. Like, I think that that's a cool aesthetic. I love that it matched not only the in-strike blasters, but also when they did the Elite variant, that matched all of the Elite blasters. Like, I've always really, really liked this. For the longest time, I was super excited that my Death Dealer had a 3D printed attachment on it so that I could put my Spectre barrel on it. And then when I did the end bringer, I made one of these that was very complicated, wrapped up with EL wire, and that was also very, very special. So these have uh, been a part of my modding work for a really long time. One of my favorite things about them is that since they don't have the mechanism down below, they kind of, you can see it on a lot of these, there's a, a dot here that snaps into this hole here on most blasters and that's how they retain. This instead has a recessed button in here that just applies torsion as soon as it's pushed onto something and then it does not come off easily. I think that that's really novel. I like that a whole, whole lot and I think that it's really cool. Aesthetically, these paint up really great. They're really nice and they have no uh, screws in them so you don't have to worry about taking them apart. That's my number two. I think that it's really special. The reason that it's not number one is because something came along a couple of years ago that just blew everything out of the water aesthetically. Coming in at number one, we have these guys, like a funky barrel wolverine. All right, so anyway, this is worker barreling material. In particular, this one is my favorite because it's got this really cool translucent orange swirl pattern. It comes in black, it comes in regular orange, it comes with swirl, not swirl. Uh, some would call that rifling, but it's not actually rifling since it doesn't actually engage and twist the darts. It's just there for aesthetics, but man, does it look good with those aesthetics. Now, Worker also has a huge variety of these like muzzle brakes, I guess, that you could put on the end or flash hiders as they, they might be in certain cases. But ultimately, 
I just think that these look great and the elegance of their design is that they can go on realistically anything. They can go on springers, they can go on things that don't even have in strike like barrel attachments. So all of these so far have been uh, the proprietary patent that Hasbro has that lets you twist and lock all of the things together. The really cool thing about this is that you don't need that. You can put it on 3D printed parts like the Apis and it gives you a really cool rifle feel to pretty much anything that you put it on. So I think that that is a really neat aesthetic. You can see it on Apis here. I've used it on Equinox as well. I think that it looks really, really great. It turns these things into like awesome sci-fi-esque builds. You can use any flash hider you want. This is of course a 3D printed one that looks pretty good. Worker does not just have these two varieties. They have like dozens of different kinds, some of which are huge screw on things, some of which are very minimalistic. Like this, you could 3D print anything that you possibly wanted for them. My favorite, favorite thing about them is just how incredibly useful they are for making builds look custom. You can cut them to literally any length. You can make SBRs, you can make full length rifles, you can do realistically whatever you want with them and I think that that makes them so very, very cool. Since I like them so much and the aesthetic is so unique currently in the hobby, that's why they're the number one for this video. If you'd like to pick up either the material or the flash hiders, I will try to link to them in the description box below, but they float in and out. Uh, various different availabilities on Taobao, on Alibaba, on ByChina, etc. And all of that is like sometimes trickled to distributors and on to Amazon. So no promises, they are hard to find at different times, which is why I stockpile them in the workshop. But these are my favorite. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Before I sign off though, I have one interesting, not honorable mention, but just a question for you guys. So the last time I did a big order from China, I got in a bunch of these things. Now these are designed for the water baby ball shooter things, like the, the Orbeez guns almost. And uh, so I'm gonna have to dremel out that ID, but uh, if you look back here, this, uh, this is compatible, it just needs a little bit of love. So I think that I'm going to build like a Rio rifle style thing out of this, but I'm just curious like, what should I build with this? Let me know in the comment section below. Whoever makes the best comment, I will probably just do your build because I don't know what to do with this. I think that like a full size like AR-15 build could be really cool with it, but that's just my idea. I'd really love to get feedback from you guys because that's ultimately who will be watching and enjoying the content. So thank you guys very much for watching. As always, much love. Nerf on, Drac out.